Welcome to another Swift UI Basics video. In this one, we're going to cover the Swift UI text field, which is going to allow your user to type in text and you are going to be able to capture that text and do something with it. So first of all, let's start with the keyword text field. And to be honest, this is probably the one that you are going to be using the most. There are two parameters you have to pass in. One is going to be a placeholder piece of text and the other is a binding to a state property that is going to store the data that the user types in. So let me show you how that works. But first, we have to create that state property that we need to pass into the second parameter. So let's delete this for now. And at the top here, we are going to create a state property. It can be private if you are just using this data here. And I'm going to call this, uh, let's say, text input. And we can default that to an empty string. Next, let us put the actual text field in here, and I'm going to use this one. So this one, we can put a placeholder text. Uh, let's say, let's say it's a form. We're going to ask someone to enter the, their name, and here we're going to put a binding to that property, and you specify a binding with a, a dollar symbol like that. And this binding is two-way, meaning that if you programmatically change the value inside this property, it is going to reflect in the text field. And in the reverse way, if the user types uh, data into the text field, it is going to be stored in there. So let's actually try this out. And I'm going to launch it in the simulator so that we can see the software keyboard and everything. Now, by default, the style is borderless. It's plain on iOS at least. And if I had not placed a placeholder text in there, we wouldn't even be able to see it. So I can type it in because I have my keyboard here. You can ignore these warnings down here. That's just debugging information. And if I press Command and K in the simulator, I can bring up the software keyboard. So that's what that looks like. Now let's go back to the text field. And here's a simple style that you can add just to add some uh, border around it. So if you go rounded border, and let's say we add some padding, then, and let's re-enable this preview, it'll look more like a text field like that. That's perfect. So there is your basic usage example. Now let's dive into some other text field scenarios that will come up. Oh, and one quick thing, if you want to download the sample code for this, we've got it all in a single handy Xcode project. In fact, it contains a sample code for all of the Swift UI components so that you can learn from it or copy and paste the code into your own project. Just visit cwc.to slash Swift UI dash kit. It's a free download. I'll leave it in the description below the video too. All right, now back to the tutorial. What if we wanted to do something when the user has entered in their name? So one way to do that is to use a modifier called on submit. So in this scenario for this demo, I am just going to print out in the console when uh, when they hit enter on their keyboard or return on the software keyboard, like the on-screen keyboard. It's just going to print out the output in here. But technically, you could do anything you want. This is how you would respond to that. So here, I'm going to just type in Chris. I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard, and you can see it appear there. So in the software keyboard, same thing would go if they type in something and they hit return, it captures that event right there. Now, in many cases, if you're filling out a form, you would want by default to put the cursor in the first text field, right? Here, I have to tap into it before the cursor appears. So in order to set focus state to the text field, and that simply means you want the cursor to be in the text field, and the text field is the active element that the user is interacting with. Right? To set the focus state for the text field, there is a modifier called focused, and you can set it to a focus state, which can be a true or false, or it could be a little more complicated if you want to set focus state for multiple text fields. For now, let's talk about a single text field. So in order to do this, let's declare a property up here to keep track of the focus state. And there's a special uh, property wrapper called focus state, and we'll call this focus. And it's going to be a Boolean, and we're not going to set the value just yet. And here, in this modifier, 
we can uh, bind it to that property that we just declared. Now, when if we want the text field to be active and focused, when this view appears, we can add a modifier called uh, on appear. And when this happens, let me just do this, we are going to set focus equals true. So now let me run it. And when this text field appears, you're going to see that it's focused, active and ready to go. So the user can type in Jill, for example, and it appears down there. Now let's talk about a scenario where there are multiple text fields, and you want to jump from text field to text field, as they are filling in the information, you can still use a single focus state. However, you're going to need to create a special enum, which you can think of as a value that contains multiple values. So let me show you how that works. Here, outside of the body property, I'm going to create a new enum. And I'm going to call this um, perhaps form field focus. And it has to be hashable, you can think of it as allowing these values to be compared against each other. So let us create one of these cases for each text field that we have. So let's say we're going to have two text fields, first name and last name. So we're going to use the keyword case, and then we are going to put first name, and then last name. And then up here, instead of a bool, this is going to be an instance of form field focus. And then when we set the focus here, we are going to say that, okay, let's comment this out for a second. Focused, we are going to use this one instead. So this is going to be a binding to that hashable focus state, which we've declared right up here. And there's also an equals parameter, which basically states, if this property equals this value, then this text field should be focused or active. So let's see how that works. So again, we can bind to focus, and then we can say equals first name. So if this property is equal to first name, then it should be focused on. And now we are going to create the second. Uh, this should be an optional value, because in the beginning, it's not set. Okay, so let's create a second text field just so we can demonstrate. And this is going to be last name, this one should probably be first name. We also need another state property for you know, to capture the text input for that. Uh, I'll call this text input two. So we're going to say that this is bound to uh, text input two text field style is rounded border. So we'll add the padding. And then the focus state for this one is focus equals uh, last name. Oh, got to close the back. Okay, so now we are ready to go. If I run this preview, we'll see two text fields first name and last name. And then just like so, in the beginning, when the form appears, we are going to set the focus equal to the first name. And then when the user hits return on the first name, we're going to set the focus to the last name. And that's how it's going to jump from the first text field to the second one. So you can see when we launch the screen, the focus is set to the first text field, I'm going to type in like that, I'm going to hit enter, which is submit. And you can see in the code here, that it prints out what I typed in. And then it sets the focus to the next text field. So it jumped down here, right? And I can do that. All right. So that's how we work with focus states for multiple text fields. Two last things before we go. Number one, here's the playlist for tutorials on all the Swift UI components. And down here, you can download a single Xcode project, which contains sample code for all of these Swift UI components. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.